Thanks for joining me again as we look back at another great classic film. This is from a master director making just his second colour film and his first and only film in 3D. It was adapted from a popular stage play and starred an actress who would go on to become one of the best known of Hitchcock's blondes. It is Dial In For Murder from 1954. After I Confess in 1953, Hitchcock was contracted to complete one more film for Warner Brothers. He had planned to film The Bramble Bush, based on the 1948 novel by David Duncan. However, there were problems with the script and the budget. So Warner Brothers allowed Hitchcock to scrap that project and begin production on Dial M for Murder. Such was his lack of interest in the project that he claimed that he could have phoned in his direction and that the actions you know, wouldn't have been any more interesting uh, if he'd just staged it in a phone booth. This is, however, a far better film than Hitchcock thought, or perhaps intended. Based on a story by Frederick Knott, which had its first iteration as a TV play that first aired on the BBC in 1952. After that huge success, Knott was encouraged to adapt it for the stage. Low expectations meant that the play was very modestly budgeted, and with the British actors uh, in the play were asked to wear their own clothes when performing. After the stage version had proved a substantial hit both in London and in New York, the film rights changed hands for £20,000, which rather annoyed Frederick Knott, who had sold the, the rights earlier for only £1,000. The Broadway production played at the Plymouth Theatre for 552 performances, winning John Williams the 1953 Tony Award for his role as Inspector Hubbard. Uh, he was subsequently cast in the film in that role. Anthony Dawson was also cast for the, from the play for his role as Captain Lesgate. Alfred Hitchcock had hoped to cast Deborah Kerr, William Holden and Cary Grant in the three central roles, but Kerr and Holden were busy making other movies, and Warner Brothers refused to let Grant play a villain. Ray Milland was cast as attempted murderer Tony Windus. Olivia de Havilland was offered the role of his wife Margot Windus, but she wanted too much money, so Grace Kelly was cast in her first collaboration with Hitchcock. She became something of a favourite of his, also appearing in Rear Window in 1954, and To Catch a Thief in 1955. Kelly retired from acting only two years later to marry Prince Renier of Monaco, who she had met while shooting To Catch a Thief. Warner Brothers insisted on shooting the movie in 3D using their own proprietary camera rig called the All Media Camera. The 3D craze was fading and Alfred Hitchcock was sure that the movie would be released flat, saying of 3D, it's a nine day wonder and I came in on the ninth day. Hitchcock hedged his bets while shooting this film, with the demands of 3D explaining the prevalence of low angle shots, with lamps and other objects between the audience and the cast members. It is a style that works in both formats, to be honest. Hitchcock wanted his first shot to be a close up of a finger dialing the letter M on a rotary telephone dial, but the 3D camera was unable to correctly focus on such a tight close up. So Hitchcock had a giant wooden finger and a proportionally large dial built in order to achieve the effect. Filmed in just 36 days, Hitchcock made a special effort to shoot scenes indoors almost exclusively with only a few brief shots that take place outside. Hitchcock believed that the decision to shoot most scenes indoors would, would create a sense of claustrophobia. Hitchcock arranged for Grace Kelly to dress in bright colours at the start of the movie before they got progressively darker as the film progressed. Kelly was also instructed to behave as if she were in a trance of some type during her scene in the final act to make her seem somewhat detached and distant. After several unsuccessful attempts to film the scene where Margot stabs Swan with the scissors, uh, Alfred Hitchcock said, this is nicely done, but there wasn't enough gleam in the scissors and murder without gleaming scissors is like asparagus without the hollandaise sauce. Tasteless. Despite his claims of disinterest in this film, Hitchcock actually lost weight due to anxiety during filming of the murder sequence. He obsessively rehearsed the scene and shot take after take in order to capture the insertion of the scissors the way he had envisioned it. Alfred Hitchcock's signature cameo in Dial In For Murder is an unusual one. He is seen in a black and white uh, reunion photograph sitting at a banquet table amongst former students and faculty. The film was originally released uh, with an intermission despite it only being 105 minutes long. This was in place to allow the projectionist time to reload near the halfway mark, which was a requ requirement for screening 3D films. After one preview performance and, and only four regular screenings, uh, the Philadelphia theatre manager contacted uh, the studios uh, concerned that people were staying away in droves. He asked for permission to drop the 3D and show the film flat, at which point audience numbers picked up significantly. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times called the film a technical triumph, a film that needed good actors and has them. 
Verotti wrote, there were storyline weaknesses that reduced how well the film's suspense could be developed, but felt that the performances and several of Hitchcock's tricks had covered up for those weaknesses. The monthly film bulletin wrote that Dial M for Murder may be slightly off-peak Hitchcock, but by any other standard, it's a sophisticated, chillingly sinister thriller, and one that boasts an unforgettable form performance from Grace Kelly. In February of 1980, the dual strip system was used for the revival of the film in 3D uh, at the York Theatre in San Francisco. This revival did so well that Warner Brothers did a limited national re-release of the film in February of 1982. There have been numerous revivals on the stage and four more screen adaptions, a 1958 television film for NBC, a two-hour colour version in 1968 for the American Broadcasting Company, a 1981 made-for-TV movie and a 98. 1998 movie inspired by the film called A Perfect Murder. It's ranked number nine on the American Film Institute's list of top 10 greatest mystery films and amongst their top 100 most heart-pounding American movies. So lots of good reasons to watch this film. It's a taut Hitchcock thriller, enjoyable in both 2D and 3D, but admittedly the 2D version is probably better in my opinion. Uh, there's good performances by Grace Kelly and Ray Milland, and there's great use of colour which really adds to the drama. So, what I'd suggest you do is that you go to our website, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, click on it and watch it, and as always, you know, see what you think, we'd love you to come back, let other people know your thoughts about this particular film, and whether you'd recommend it for them also. And then we're back in the not too distant future with our next classic films review, catch you next time.